Hey guys, and welcome to Quick Tutorials with Matt. Today we'll be looking at mechanisms. Mechanisms are an advanced concept in Dwarf Fortress and not something players just starting out should worry about. They are mostly used to streamline efficiency in a more advanced fortress or to make decorations in a more advanced fortress. While the idea of mechanisms may seem daunting, the individual pieces are simple and easy to understand. To start off, the first thing you need to know about is power. Power is what causes any mechanical object to move or perform its function. Power is generated one of two ways. Through a windmill, which looks like this, or a water wheel, which looks like this. For our first demonstration, I will be using a windmill. As you see, I have one set up right here. Uh, it is connected through the bottom to a gear assembly. Gear assemblies are incredibly important because this is how you transfer power from a water wheel or a windmill. Transfer power directly down one level. So if you build one on the same level as your dwarves are standing on, you have, to, you have to channel under them so you can place a gear assembly. Another thing a gear assembly does is it accepts power from one input and transfers it out. Let's say you have your windmill all set up, the gear assembly, it's working, it's generating power. You want to know how much power it's generating. Well, all you gotta do is hit Q, and it's generating 20 power, and all it needs to keep itself moving is 5, so it is generating a positive output of power. Now, the gear assembly below it also has a power rating. Um, it only needs 5 to continue working, and it is receiving 20. Now that you have your windmill, you don't know what to do. You're like, what, what do I power with this, with this new mechanism I've developed? Well, there aren't too many things in Dwarf Fortress that you need to power, but they are important. One of them is a screw pump, which is the only way you can transfer water from one place to another without digging a channel for it. Now what we have here is we have a little zone. A little pasture with some rabbits in it, and a llama, and, and something else. And uh, oh, it's got it's got a watering hole. I've dug for him right here. It's like a nice little channel, it's a little channel ready ready for water. But there's no water. I want to be able to feed my little animals. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a screw pump and I'm gonna pump in water from this stream. your screw pump, all you do is hit B, uppercase M, and then S, and screw pump. Now orientating your screw pump the right direction is incredibly important. You want to hit H, U, K, and M to configure which direction. Now I want to place my screw pump to pump from the east, so I have to make sure it says pump from east, and I put it next to the water. I don't put it over the water. It needs to be on solid ground. I put it next to the water, so the west end is aimed into my channel. I enter. I pick a block, a corkscrew, and a pipe section. Now that the screw pump is finished, you need to hook it up to your window. The way you do that is through the use of axles. Axles connect directly to the gear assembly. To build axles, you hit B uppercase M and then for now we want horizontal axles because we're moving along the same plane as the screw pump. Vertical axles are only used for when you go in between some belts. In order to build axles you will need logs. You need one log for every three, one to three axles you build. From four to seven you need two logs and from eight to ten you need three logs and that's as long as an axle can go without needing a gear assembly. For now, we will build a horizontal axle stretching out to here. It's a gear assembly on the end. You cannot change axles' directions without a gear assembly. I will now build the rest of the axles I need to build. In building mechanisms, a safety valve you could have is to build a lever and connect it to one of your gearboxes. This ensures that you can stop your mechanism whenever you want and don't have to worry about 
it flooding forever without being able to stop it. Burst through build, um, shift T, and you can just put L and just place a lever whatever you please. Now, you may notice that my mechanisms are not turning anymore. They're no longer moving. It's because I've run into the problem that these mechanisms need 47 power, where my windmill is only generating 20. It's helpful to notice that the total power needed is this entire mechanism, mechanism together, not each individual piece. It will not move again until I have the necessary amount of power. Luckily, this can be remedied, remedied easily through adding more windmills. Adding windmills is as simple as pressing B, machine components, shift M, windmill, building it on top of another gearbox. In order to do this, you will need to build platforms to get up to the Z level you want to. I always like to build a ramp and a wall. I need 47 and on average the uh, windmills are only produce 20, I'm going to build another windmill. Now that we have all the windmills built, we potentially have enough power to power this pump. Now as you can see, these are not moving, whereas this top axle is. It's because the lever is connected to this gearbox and is now set in the disengaged function. Water would not flood everywhere out of control. We just set the order on this to pull the lever, shift P, and wait. Someone will come pull the lever, activate the gearbox, and the water should start pumping. This guy, I think he's coming to flip this switch. Oh, oh, looks like that's right. Oh, and the water has started pumping right into our little guy. All right, perfect. Now this is flooding a little more rapidly than I had anticipated, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop this, but hope that's helped you to understand the basics of windmills and one uh, use of power, which is a uh, screw pump, can be very effective in making waterfalls, fountains, all sorts of stuff, all sorts of great things. Now we're going to move on to another excellent use for power on a millstone. But this time we're not going to use our windmills, we're going to use instead a water wheel, which I feel is a more versatile and um, easier to manage form of gaining power. Water wheels can be created anywhere there is flowing water. So that means they can be underground anywhere. The problem with windmills is they have to have a, be on a space that is designated as an outside area. Before you build a water wheel you have to have the uh, horizontal axle already set for it and ready to receive the... Um, as it's, a, it's, like, it's like a place that the water wheel can attach to. So I'm going to attach horizontal axle directly onto the millstone. Now, if you're wondering what a uh, millstone does and you want to go check out what its tasks were, well, you can't because you need to get it powered before you find out. So take that, you nosy son of a gun. We have our axle here, uh, all set to accept a water wheel. So click B, shift M, and then W for water wheel. Pop that on the end there. Three logs. Chestnut, and uh, when I next see you, we're gonna have a working millstone. Our very nice engineer has built our water wheel. It's producing 100 power. It only needs 30 to keep itself running, and all of these axles and the millstone. So now we can mill plants and mill seeds and nuts to paste to our heart's content. This is a very simple rundown into what into what mechanisms are, but I'm giving you the basic components and the basic skills to go about making your own fantastic contraptions. The limits for these kind of things are endless. There, There is even a record of someone uh, who made a calculator out of just dwarf fortress mechanics. I'll include the link to that in the description. It's, it's, it's unreal. One last interesting thing to note, just for all you getting started out there, you may be wondering how you can use this in your fortress with power 
being so limited. Um, you either have to have flowing water or air, but one of the ways you can kind of create unlimited power is through a perpetual motion device, which is possible in Dwarf Fortress. Basically you have a pump pumping water into a channel which a water wheel is riding over. The water goes through, spins the water wheel, the water wheel powers the pump, the pump pumps the water back into the channel and it goes in a continuous loop. Um, that's how I created uh, power in some of my previous videos for my mind cards, and uh, it's it's the easiest and maybe a glitch. I don't know. I'm not going to question it. I just think it's fantastic and it's one of the easiest ways to get power in your fortress. All right, guys, this has been quick tutorials. Excellent work, everybody.